Hi guys and girls, I'm so pumped this morning, just after the weekend, looking forward to interviewing Georg Schimmel, one of the most respected thought leaders in the industry. He is the CEO of that great brand, LJ Hooker. Welcome, Georg. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. It's great to be here. Uh, Georg, for those of you that aren't with LJ Hooker, that are watching this um, out there, can we have the uh, two-minute version of how Georg Chamil came about being the CEO of LJ Hooker, what were you doing before, how long you've been doing the job? I'm uh, in the job for a bit more than a, a year now, in the CEO job. Uh, worked for LJ Hooker for two and a half years in total. And uh, my background is, um, I've got uh, a strong online background, so I worked for six years with realestate.com.au, looking after the finances as well as uh, some overseas portals and uh, always had a passion for, for real estate. I do believe it's very important, whatever profession you pick, you have to be able to identify yourself with uh, the product, uh, which is being transacted, in this case, uh, the property. And um, um, that's how I came up uh, uh, choosing, uh, joining LG Hooker. I love the Australian real estate market and the New Zealand real estate market because there's so much passion in the market. Uh, people are very professional on how they go about selling uh, properties or investing in properties. Okay, so it's nearly a decade in property-related property real estate. That's right. Um, uh, uh, CFO of um, realestate.com, so that exposure to the online world. Um, and now uh, you look over Australia and New Zealand? I look after the whole group, uh, oh. which is in nine countries, actually. Right. Uh, can you give me an idea uh, some of those countries, the, the main ones? Where are they? Australia, New Zealand? Australia, New Zealand, Indonesia, yeah. um, UAE, Japan. India, uh, we've got an office in, in, in Vanuatu, uh, Hong Kong, obviously. Um, so um, it is, it's, it's, it's pretty well spread across the whole, the whole uh, Asian market uh, at, this, at this stage. I mean, the fastest growing uh, markets uh, right now for us at this moment, how we can change, is Indonesia and, and the UAE. Yeah. And I do believe that uh, India uh, will show some growth very soon. Wonderful. Most of uh, the viewers that are on my uh, subscriber list are Aussies and Kiwis, mm -hmm. uh, the majority of them Australians. To give me an idea of the uh, size and coverage of the LJ Hooker Group, have, how many offices thereabouts? Mm -hmm. We've got more than uh, 700 offices uh, in which you have uh, around 8,000 uh, people, uh, 4,000 uh, roughly in sales, uh, 2,000 in property management and another 2,000 being principals or support staff in the offices. So it's quite a sizable uh, entity. Beautiful. And the areas of focus is you've got your residential real estate, mm -hmm. commercial. Commercial, uh, home loans, um, rural, and, um, and um, a bit of strata management, a couple of other functions. So I would say it's, 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 the, it's, the, it's the full uh, picture. Okay. With so many thousands of people that LJ Hooker employs in the sales function, you would have a fantastic helicopter view of what are the critical behaviours of a good salesperson. Have you seen a common theme of great salespeople? I've seen a, a common theme which, which is also valid across uh, not just Australia and New Zealand, but also uh, mirrors itself in, in Indonesia, which is really, first of all, being passionate about the, 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 the job. So, I mean, if, uh, to be able to get up at, some people get up at five o'clock in the morning and really work six days a week or six and a half days a week, you have to be passionate. Second bit is you have to know your market. Your market being uh, the local market, you have to know every house, uh, almost like when it was sold for, what it was sold for, what uh, the uh, family history of, of, of all these properties are. And then the third thing is um, you have to have the right tools uh, to uh, support uh, the uh, sale process of, 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 of the vendor, meaning you have to have uh, good online tools, you have to good a uh, good database, and uh, you have to also have a very strong understanding of marketing. Beautiful. Okay, you've covered all spectrums there. Uh, I'm curious, when I ask you that question about what makes a good real estate owner, is it the same things or could you add or minus things out of the, that answer? I think it's, it's not uh, exactly the same thing. So there is a difference between a, a good salesperson and a good a business. And a good business owner uh, also uh, requires uh, to be able to uh, spend enough time on, on, on really understanding how the business is performing. So it needs to be a good manager. A good business owner needs to be a very, very good manager in a, in a business sense. 
Um, however, um, if, a, if, a, if, if, if this business owner wants to be even better, right. uh, wants to be great, how to get from good to great, he needs to adopt leadership skills, meaning have the energy uh, to, 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 to really power the office through, energize other people, uh, execute well and making sure others, his whole team is executing in a, in a, in a highly professional way. And, and also then having the, the, the edge of, of sometimes having to make hard decisions in terms of people management and uh, at the same time being able to also identify new trends and, and adopt new, new products uh, uh, which support the whole uh, processes in, in, in this office. Right, so what you're saying is not necessarily a good salesperson would be a good principal That's and not a good principal necessarily would be a good salesperson. Not necessarily, I mean they can be but yeah. not necessarily. Right. Uh, every franchise group uh, goes out there and says this is the reason why we're the best. Yeah. And you expect that because that's the business that you're in. I do the same with the products that we have. I say use our products, use print, uh, use News Limited, uh, you're no different. Uh, do you think that there are differentiators between you and other groups? What are your main unique selling propositions that you believe are highly valued in the commercial world out there for an agent? I do believe um, that uh, we at LG Hooker differentiate ourselves uh, by the brand. Um, we do independent brand research, which puts our brand actually at the number one position uh, when it comes to unprompted brand awareness. Uh, the second piece uh, certainly is systems and processes and all the knowledge. I mean, uh, uh, longer serving uh, groups like, like LG Hooker have accumulated a lot of wealth of knowledge, uh, and the, the key is, is how you store the knowledge, how you make it accessible and available uh, for, for all the staff. We're using a lot of video in, in disseminating information. And then the last bit is, is, is really the people and, and, and being able to attract and retain exceptional people and, and, and look after them. And uh, this goes all the way to uh, what we have is a 21 club where we, where we celebrate uh, people who are more than 21 years with the company and we've got more than 300 people in this, in this category. And in fact, we've got two people in our group uh, who have 60 years plus experience. One of them is still working for us. He has 62 years of service in New Zealand, Roger Stark, which is pretty amazing. He's a principal? He, 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 used, to, he used to have all different roles. He's now a director of, uh, of, the, of the franchise group in New Zealand. Right. Okay. Um, so you've got uh, a number of people, uh, 300 people, 21 years and over. Yes. Extraordinary. It is extraordinary, especially, I mean, if you add up the age, uh, that brings you all the way back. Uh, 30, uh, 300 times 21 gets you all the way back to uh, before the pyramids were built in terms of the experience in, in, in our company. Amazing. Uh, Georg, I, I can't help but touching on the uh, thank you, Mr. Hooker, uh, brand awareness. I mean, um, a lot's happened in real estate over the last two, three decades. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that recall of that campaign and the brain tattoo it has left um, people, both agents and consumers, is, is extraordinary. That Thank you, Mr. Hooker. Thank you, Mr. Hooker, as well as Nobody Does It Better, which is our, our other uh, tagline, uh, which we're currently also uh, bringing out there into the, into, the, into the public with our uh, big uh, TV advertising campaign, which we're currently running. Okay, so TV is something that um, you have used as a strategy over the years. It's also a strategy that you're saying you've got going July to October. That's right. And um, I believe that uh, one of the focuses is not just being, you know, promoting uh, um, LJ Hooker, but there's the uh, combination of using offline, online, the diversion of mobile and, and um, TV. Uh, can you explain how you're working that together? What has certainly helped and, and made us um, re-enter into the TV advertising space, which we, which we didn't uh, do for probably three or four years because uh, the internet or online uh, was, was, was much better in terms of driving traffic. What made us re-enter is actually the emergence of uh, mobile technology. Right. Um, everybody who sits in front of the TV um, is at times a bit bored. Now with mobile devices, um, you end up checking emails or you end up uh, uh, going to other websites and so on. So if, if a TV ad promotes um, a certain uh, URL, uh, you're more likely to enter that and thereby engage in the process. So mobile has certainly helped TV uh, to uh, keep 
uh, to remain relevant and to re-emerge as a relevant form of advertising. Uh, before that, it was predominantly regional uh, TV, which, which, which was quite effective, but national TV wasn't too much. Now, it's, now it has changed again. Okay. Uh, Gil, so you've got the TV happening over the next three to four months. Um, we were having lunch um, uh, a month ago, and I think since then you've done the sleep out. Yes. Um, when was that? Sleep out was uh, two weeks ago, I guess. Um, it was a fantastic course. There were, in, in New South Wales alone, 330 other uh, CEOs, and um, um, they've raised, uh, I think the whole initiative has raised more than $5 million, which is fantastic uh, for, for such a course. Um, and uh, when we had lunch, we also talked about uh, our little iPad app for, for, for kids. Uh, which we which we launched um, to help parents who are going through an open for inspection or or interacting with uh, real estate agents uh, to to keep the kids uh, particularly the age which is very hard to keep under control between four and, and, and ten years a bit under control so we've launched that um, got a lot of positive uh, feedback uh, for that uh, we've also um, looked into the development of the whole industry via our ideas exchange which we ran in May across uh, Melbourne, uh, Sydney and, and Brisbane. Um, first time uh, we did it and we got uh, quite a lot of uh, not people attending, far more than we actually had, had expected. Um, and, uh, and now it's very much around um, driving um, the, 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 the basics and the fundamentals uh, through our network and making sure uh, there's incremental uh, improvement on, on each of those from open for inspection um, uh, prospecting all, all, all the different elements um, make them better and better and better. Outstanding. Uh, Gil, if you were meeting yourself 25 years ago, yes. what would you say to yourself about business and about real estate now that you've gone through those 25 years? What would you say to yourself? I would say um, probably should have moved uh, earlier, migrated earlier to Australia because uh, um, it, it's, it's a fantastic uh, country with a highly developed uh, real estate uh, industry. And um, uh, the other thing is um, what I've learned over the last uh, probably 20, 25 years was uh, um, it, it always pays uh, to surround yourself with really exceptional, exceptional people uh, because when they grow, you grow with them and you grow with them in, 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 in combination. The second bit is um, is, is really do what, what, what you like to do. So never pick a job uh, just because you think it gets you somewhere else. Uh, in, in so like more from a career strategic point of view, but really pick a job which you like doing now. So um, that's, that's probably by far the biggest career advice I can give. And also um, not to get uh, too much discouraged if, if, if so-called experts tell you one way or other way is, is the only right way uh, to go. And if you look at my background, my career, I certainly I started off doing computer science, um, and then did uh, w went quite deep in, in terms of finance and uh, and, uh, and and strategy. Um, if I look back, it's the perfect combination uh, for the job back then. Nobody would have uh, probably uh, predicted it, and they said, oh, why did you first do online and uh, uh, and, and and computer?" Um, and uh, nobody really could see. Uh, this in which I couldn't see it myself, but but uh, I'm very very happy um, that I have a bit of a broader background. Yeah, it's funny, you We talked about it over lunch that day, where um, your life goes a certain direction, um, and the truth is, you get the 2020 vision at the end of it, where you turn <laughs> around and you say, "They're the dots. That's why it's all happened." Yes. When you're going through the journey, sometimes it doesn't make sense. Yes. Yes. Hindsight is <laughs> it's a fantastic uh, way of. of Making, uh, making decisions uh, rational, yes. Yeah, okay, so just recapping on, I think that was just some really gold advice there about uh, not worrying too, about, too much about what others are, are thinking, having a self-belief in the direction that you're yep. going, uh, about uh, passion, about that this man here has come over from uh, uh, Germany, wasn't it? Germany, yes, Okay, exactly. he's got an attitude of gratitude living in this great country. Um, so we should come here earlier and for many of us that are living in this part of the world it's something that we've got every day. Uh, Georg, um, as we finish off here I want to ask you your prediction about real estate in the future. That's, you, you get a good helicopter view. You're, you're not necessarily out with buyers and sellers but from a strategic point of view you're seeing the big picture. 
can you give us um, your intuition on what your thinking is going to happen over the next five years in the real estate agency practice? It is very, very important in the future to have the best salespeople in an office. It's not, it's not as relevant uh, to have as many shop fronts uh, as possible. Um, why is that? Because with, uh, with the internet and, and modern forms of communication, you're less bound to go to a certain office. Some of the parts of the processes can actually happen and are happening online. In particular, the research is happening uh, to a, a large extent already uh, online. So therefore, offices, um, there will be a certain um, uh, concentration of offices. Office will get bigger, which, yep. which helps offices. They get stronger, bigger, stronger. They might have uh, satellites and might be in, in, in spots where you least expect a, um, a real estate transaction, closer to where people actually need uh, the agents to be. Um, on the other side, uh, with the current undersupply uh, in the market uh, and, and the likely uh, pickup of, 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 of volumes uh, as a result of that, as soon as new buildings are approved, I think the industry as a whole uh, will get even more attractive. Uh, yeah. and, uh, Therefore, I do believe um, it will be one of the key areas uh, of employment, um, residential, but also commercial and, 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 and other areas. And then lastly, um, which I've touched on before, um, the, given that there's so much data out there, um, the, the, the volume of data has increased, but that uh, hasn't necessarily found its reflection in the quality of the data. So, well, Because everybody can enter data and, and put data in via social media, uh, there's a huge abundance of what agents also will require is, is even better tools in terms of staying on top of the data and, and responding to it, but, but it also reinforces the position of the agent because consumers, while they get access to more data, will might feel still uh, quite lost about it and need someone, a trusted authority, to guide them through the process. Perfect. Uh, Georg, thank you so much. I know you've got a lot on your plate at the moment. I noticed that there's uh, a lot of action happening in Victoria. You're just growing incredibly there. Yes. Are, are you are you spending time there? How's what's what's going on there? You've put uh, in a few offices. We, there. We've put a few offices on there, so we're the fastest uh, growing uh, franchise group uh, currently in Victoria, as well as in New Zealand, as well as in Indonesia, uh, which is which is fantastic. So I'm going to uh, Victoria later um, in the week. Um, there'll be awards night, and everybody will be pretty. Excited and uh, and amazed about it. Uh, people always said uh, Victoria is such a hard market uh, to to it's so different. We actually do believe uh, Victoria is, is 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 a great market, and uh, with the right attitude and the right people, you can succeed in such a market. Beautiful, uh, guys and girls. We've had one of the the nice, smart people in the business, Georg Shamil, CEO of the LJ Hooker Group worldwide. Thank you so much, Georg. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Tom. You. Thank it was you. a pleasure.